Joining me now to talk about it, Kelly Sadler is former special assistant to President Trump, now the director of communications at America First Policies and America First Action. Kelly, good to see you. So uh, essentially, Cuomo can't stomach the idea that a Trump appointee <laughs> would preside over a marriage of all things. I've been trying to think of something I'm more uh, sort of random and senseless and just plain stupid than that, but I've come up empty uh, because, you know, it's Andrew o Cuomo, the ever obtuse Cuomo. Um, what's your reaction to this? I mean, it is just so petty. I mean, for $25, a New Yorker can go online and become an official wedding officiant. I mean, it is absurd. But, you know, we've seen Andrew Cuomo use this, you know, political weapons against the president throughout his governorship. He signed, you know, legislation that basically gives a New York Congress uh, more access to the President Trump's tax returns. He basically signed legislation that said, you know, anyone that's pardoned by the president can face conviction and persecution in the state of New York. He's been petty since the get-go on this. Remember when the president left New York to make his official home in Florida? You know, Andrew Cuomo said good riddance. I mean, this is just politics at its absolute worst. And, and Trump has obviously had an enormous impact in shaping the judiciary. And yes, I mentioned the Vox absolutely. analysis. It's a left-leaning website. Um, but to their credit, they did a fair analysis, far more impressive resumes than any past president. That must have been a rather painful uh, admission by <laughs> Vox. But it's true, isn't it? Our Hard for them to write, but it's absolutely true. And this is one of President Trump's long-lasting legacies, 187 federal court, uh, you know, appointees, uh, nominees. Uh, one in four of every federal circuit judge is now a Trump appointee. They are all, you know, 50 years of age or below, so they're going to have a lasting impact on these courts. Two federal, you know, two Supreme Court uh, justices, as well as, you know, this president is filling these vacancies faster than— the President Obama done, has done at a breakneck speed, you know, twice as fast, filling twice as many vacancies. So this is one of the President Trump's real accomplishments and great for the conservative movement and uh, in, in general. Um, if you read the New York Times, and I don't really recommend it unless you're looking for a good laugh, but, but they now say <laughs> that there is a media bias against uh, Liz Warren and Bernie Sanders. They call it a centrist bias, which I doubt exists since in the mainstream media there's only a liberal bias. Um, what do you think? It was a bit of a bizarre article, but, you know, I will say that Senator Sanders, in particular, has been overlooked by the media. He's been consistently running at the top of the polls. He has a, a huge, you know, grassroots base that has been fueling his organization with money. He's one of the top fundraisers, and yet he can't really get any coverage from the mainstream media, who does look like they've kind of written him off as a joke. It's, you know, the mainstream media looks like they're favoring Joe Biden and now, you know, Mayor Pete. They're the flavors of the month um, and, and is doing their work to promote them. Um, but Elizabeth Warren is her own worst enemy. Uh, I don't think that has anything to do with media bias. Well, you know, Elizabeth Warren about a week ago was slamming uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg uh, for holding big donor fundraisers in a wine cave, right? So yeah. now it yeah. turns out that Elizabeth Warren held big money donor fundraisers uh, <laughs> adjacent to a wine vault and the high-dollar guests there were sipping Pinot Noir that goes for $3,800 a bottle. Uh, another I, example I mean, Elizabeth, of hypocrisy. She is she's absolutely so disingenuous. I mean, she raised money in a bank vault, of all places, during her senatorial, <laughs> you know, run. Um, basically transferred $10 million from her senatorial campaign to her presidential campaign, and now is saying that she's writing off all these big money checks. We know that she is disingenuous, the American people is disingenuous, whether it's her child going to private school, uh, which she, you know, lied about, or whether it's her dad's a janitor, which her brother says she's lying about, whether it's her Native American and, you know, ancestry, which doesn't exist. Uh, Elizabeth Root Warren has proven time and time over again that she cannot be trusted and that she, you know, takes some liberties with the truth. Kelly Sadler, good to see you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Coming up.